Hello, my name is Michelle Rasmussen. I'm with the Schiller Institute. Uh, you spoke about a uh, geopolitical vacuum, but okay. Uh, but one thing that is 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 happening that has not been mentioned is that the uh, Chinese now, uh, with the Belt and Road Initiative, with the new Silk Road policy, are proposing to go in to the Middle East and Africa with massive economic development, something that the Schiller Institute has been campaigning for and trying to get Europe and the United States to join with China to have economic development uh, with massive infrastructure development. So for example, Macron uh, from France just went to China and said that they would work with China to bring economic development into the Middle East and Africa. And we're, we're in fact holding a, a seminar on this subject on Monday. So don't you think that it's possible for increasingly for European countries and even the United States to work with China and the other Belt and Road countries to engage in a positive economic development strategy in the Middle East and Africa? Uh, on the point on China, um, um, yes, of course, we haven't talked about that, you're right, I think there's great, uh, there's great potential on the, on, the, on the economic side. I mean, later on you have to see um, what modalities these investments and these development plans take and whether the Europeans and the US and, the, and the, we, that whether we're still in political terms also on the same line with the Chinese. But that's a topic that you know much more, much more about than I am. Thank you. Actually, I'm also with the Schiller Institute and my colleague took the first part of the question I wanted to ask as well. But the other part is uh, for Mr. Grant, which is uh, the question of the cooperation with, uh, or with China and with Russia, which I think is so positive. So I think this hype against Trump, I mean, with all the problems there are, which are legitim legitimate, but why, why is there not more support to say yes? The unipolar world is over, but that's, uh, this cooperation with China and Russia is positive because this is a basis for cooperation. And that gets to the question about Russia where, um, yes, there would be value if the United States, Europe, and Russia could all work together for more positive outcomes in the region, but, but Russia's on a very different page right now when it comes to Syria, um, and, and that's, that's problematic. Um, certainly, Chinese um, economic investment, I think, is a welcome addition to the Middle East, um, provided it doesn't come with too heavy a political price tag. Um, the Chinese have seemed reluctant to be engaged on the more political side, and that may or may not be, and the military side as well, and that may or may not be a bad thing. Hello, um, my name is Lizzie, I work with Linda LaRouche. So I have a question concerning uh, the role of China uh, through the Silk Road, because China has been inviting uh, you know, countries uh, in the Middle East and Africa to be part of the new Silk Road and work together for win-win projects, infrastructure projects, uh, nuclear power plants, water canals, and so forth, uh, to actually you know, uh, uh, use the most modern technolo uh, technology to upgrade people's living standards. And actually, recently, the, the French President uh, Macron came out uh, saying that you know, they want to join the Silk Road, that Europe should join the Silk Road, and actually that, that China has been doing a great job in Africa and that, you know, that Europe should look towards these uh, ways of collaboration instead of the, the imperialistic way. So um, uh, LaRouche has actually been saying that the U.S. And, uh, and Europe should join China's new Silk Road and work with other countries based on these win-win development projects. <coughs> what do you think? I, I'll just say quickly about the, um, the role of China and the One Belt, One Road. Look, I mean, obviously, um, um, you know, economic um, cooperation and engagement 
um, with China is, um, is extremely necessary for us and our economies. And I think, you know, to the, if we see specific uh, activities related to this plan that, that we think are constructive and we can cooperate with, that's fine. But in terms of just sort of adopting one belt, one road as, as um, our approach economically to the Middle East as Americans or as Europeans, I don't think that makes any sense. I mean, China set this up to serve its interests, its economic interests, and that's perfectly fine. I, I don't think we have to be against it. I mean, it's, it's absolutely fine, but understand that, of course, it's set up to serve China's economic interests. That's, that's absolutely fine and fair. But, um, you know, I, I think it's, it's and, and we, we, we definitely should cooperate where we, uh, uh, you know, where we can, but I, I don't think we, that means we adopt their strategy as our own. And then finally, the gentleman from the Silo Institute, I believe. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, I'm Hans Felek from the Schiller Institute. Um, my question is for uh, Miran, Dr. Miran uh, Kamrava. Um, first of all, your speech uh, didn't bore me, uh, as you uh, feared. Uh, so um, the four measures that you uh, called for, um, would it be uh, correct to summarize these four measures uh, as an international and internal end to geopolitics, uh, because there's been some uh, talk about geopolitics today, explicitly and implicitly. Uh, there was a call to, uh, for Europe to uh, improve the Mikado game of geopolitics, uh, whereas the Schiller Institute is calling for a new paradigm, which would be the end of geopolitics in all of its forms, um, and on that, um, elaborating on that question, um, which um, um, uh, intervention would you say is the least geopolitical intervention uh, when coming to uh, conditions attached to investment in the Middle East? Would that be the Atlantic, European, the United States, uh, or would that be uh, the Chinese uh, in the in the connection to the new Silk Road. Thank you. There was, there was another question, sorry, uh, that, uh, that Hans asked um, about, um, uh, uh, if I understood your question correctly, you asked what uh, uh, international investment comes with the least strings attached in the, in the, in the uh, Middle East. The, uh, the, the Chinese have been tremendously pragmatic and practical. They are freeloading off the Americans who are establishing security as far as they're concerned in the, in the strategic waterway and their, uh, the, uh, the choke point that is the uh, Hormo Strait is being secured by the Americans. And the Chinese are being extremely pragmatic and practical. They, uh, their investments are non-ideological and they're simply interested in in uh, making money, at least in so far as the uh, Middle East is concerned. Of course, elsewhere they might have other objectives, but in the Middle East they're simply for now interested in investments and making money. 